Today was the Million Person March for Children across Canada, and well, I came to Vancouver, so I decided to go check it out. Now, lots of people saying different things about, well, what was happening on the scene. Of course, the news media is giving you a completely different story than what was happening on the ground. This is what was happening on the ground. As you can see here, there was lots of people obviously being very vocal. Turn that down just a little bit. But this is footage that I shot in Vancouver as the, as the group proceeded down the road. And a lot of people were joining in on it, and it was very, very much a peaceful, peaceful protest. A lot of people were actually egged on to, uh, well, to maybe have a little confrontation with some of the counter protesters. But it would be, it would seem that nobody on this side of the uh, the protest wanted to bite in this case. Now, the mainstream media news here we got City TV or City News. Here, uh, hundreds gather in Vancouver in support of LGBT2 plus AI uh, alphabet soup community. Of course, this isn't the story. Of course, this is uh, only the story covering the counter protest and only giving their viewpoint. But is that is that something that you're used to by this point? Yeah, usually. Here we have Vancouver uh, Star. Is that Vancouver Sun? Uh, where do BC politicians stand on anti-Soji rallies launch across Canada? Basically an article uh, goading them on to denounce, denounce all of these things. But this is a, largely a protest that's come up because of the lack of support from politicians, a lack of support from uh, communities, uh, people in the in the school districts, the board of trustees, and whatnot. And of course, people have been asleep at the wheel. A lot of this ideology has crept into these boards, and now people are demanding change. They don't want what's happened and what's been happening. Now, on the street in in Ottawa, we've got Jagmeet Singh coming in here, and of course. Ca characterizing this in a completely wrong way, saying it's the rise of hate towards the alphabet soup community is deeply alarming. And this is obviously a gross mischaracterization of the protest. Many of the people in the protest don't care. In fact, there was many uh, in Vancouver, at least, there was many people of from the LGBT plus community that were uh, actually on the side of the parents in this. This whole protest was about parents' rights and the right to know what's being taught their kids in school. And the line was really crossed when teachers decided they wanted to move forward with discussing these things without the consent of the parents and then also telling children not to discuss the things that they talk about together at school, in, and namely... Uh, kids that want to start using different gender pronouns. Uh, of course, this was outlawed in New Brunswick, and there are many, many uh, <laughs> other provinces that are moving forward with such legislation. Of course, mischaracterization from your prime minister as well, when he says, let me be very clear, or make one thing very clear, transphobia, homophobia, and biphobia. He, he sounds like Hillary Clinton at this point. The basket of deplorables are have no place in this country. Well, this isn't what people were protesting against. Again, this is the line in the sand. Uh, don't get between parents and their children. And this is what has been going on. Now, Brian Lilly uh, went on Twitter and he started to report on what was actually happening, how the media portray the rallies across Canada today and how Canadians view the issues very differently. So there's actually a huge split between what the medias and the politicians are telling you and what actually is happening on the ground and what people are saying. Now, in these protests, we saw a huge presence from counter protests and from some pretty malicious groups, as we'll get into here. But there, <laughs> this was, again, largely a protest made for families. This was meant for families to get out, go to these, uh, these, these events all over the country, at all major cities in the country, and these people were peaceful, despite what you might hear in the media, despite what you might see. They may, they always, I know the media always likes to focus on any incident that happens. And this is why I wanted to focus on what was going on on the ground. And that's why I went down and I showed up myself to show what was going on. And not only me, but we had some other people show up and we're covering it as well. This was Lauren Southern that I actually bumped into while she was podcasting there, as well as running into Dan Dick 
six from Press for Truth. But and I'm gonna get more of these clips, and I'm gonna do more videos talking about this again. Uh, and as well, I'm gonna have Lauren on to talk about this. I'm also gonna have Dan Dix on to talk about this. But yeah, I'll just let this uh, this roll for a minute. And, uh... I don't know. For me, <laughs> it's always cool to see someone that. This is fun. Do something. Yeah. He comes Do something. To <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've Lauren. I've been told to come speak to you. And that's oh, awesome. wow. Cool, Amazing. cool. That's awesome. You want to say hi it. to the channel? Hey, everybody. <laughs> What's going on today? Okay, so I came, I came out here. I'm from up north a little bit. I don't know if I want to dox myself here. <laughs> but we came to probably the wokest city in Canada Definitely to check welcome. out, well, just how big this protest is gonna be. I saw footage earlier today um, from Ottawa. The hill is packed with people. So just see what, what kind of a presence. When we first got here, there was not a lot of people. The flyer was actually kind of confusing. It said meeting, meeting or walk out at, a, or march at 11. What was it, yeah, walk out yeah. at? But I guess it's happening at one o'clock uh, as opposed to across the rest of the country at nine o'clock. So there's very few people, but um, so I came with my wife and kids, and we're like, we're, we're hoping for just like a happy, friendly family yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, all these people, well, there, was, there wasn't very many people at first, so there's a lot of people just kind of sitting around. So we're like, oh, okay, we're gonna just walk around the street. And then uh, we noticed uh, the Black Block guys coming up, very loud, very vocal, came into the picture shouting, and right just immediately at the same time that they came in, there was a guy coming up, up uh, Robson, from the other direction, shouting words that I care not to say, yeah. but shouting at the Black Bloc protesters. And it seemed very like the guy was agitating, trying to stir something up. I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, but so I got a little bit of footage of that. So I'll be showing that on the channel later. And getting into that, I'll be showing this on the channel. Of course, big thanks to uh, Lauren Southern for for hosting that live stream. Uh, got in there, got to chat with her, uh, exchange contacts. So you can see her on the uh, on the, one of the live streams coming up. So everybody look forward to that. But let's get into some more of this uh, other stuff that happened. Now, this was the scene as uh, those Black Block people came. And it was very very abrupt and I was still with my wife and kids we were expecting a family friendly atmosphere in in fact it was the counter protest that made it very not a family friendly atmosphere right off the get go now I'll tell you that there was it was very early so there was only about maybe a dozen or so people that had gathered at the at the area and the counter protest protesters came in very aggressive like and uh, dressed in all black masked up and uh, with umbrellas and big flags and um, yeah, intimidating people. And then this guy showed up and it was just really bizarre, the scene. Of course, I, I was way back at the side because I was still with my wife and kids. But he was uh, obviously, he was shouting some some things and, and words I care not to, uh, to say. I've got more footage in case uh, possibly anyone wants to uh, uh, look at that, maybe know him as a, an actual agitator. Maybe I'll post that later on Twitter. But this is, again, more more footage of just the fact that this was the aggression. The aggression was coming from the counter protesters, the ones that say that they're coming to save the children. Uh, they're, they're going after families that care about their kids. <laughs> Of course, agitating. There, there was, there was no real. I, I think I saw a bit of a shoving, uh, but only from the one side. Um, but again, I, I won't, I won't show any of that stuff. There has been a few other cases across Canada where uh, they were uh, protesters were being shoved by the counter protesters in many cases. Now, this was the scene on the street, and just to illustrate how many people actually showed up for this. One o'clock came, and then people started the march, and they started walking along. So I decided to, to walk alongside of it and just show how many people deep this thing was. It was actually quite a showing. It was really amazing. And, uh, you know, people were very orderly. People were walking along. There were a few instances where uh, some of these Antifa types were running up and snatching people's signs, running away with it, tearing them up. But other than that, uh, there was there was not, not a lot of confrontation going on. But you could see how far that ran down 
down the street and just kept going, kept going, kept going. It was really a lot of people that came out and it was just a fantastic showing. Again, here's more footage of, of people as they were, as they got to the destination, there was a stage set up. Um, and of course, they, a lot of the counter protesters had showed up ahead of time so that they could block up the stage. And it was, it was, you know, it, that that's just unfortunate. It really is. Uh, the police didn't come in until after the fact. They knew about all this. I, I even emailed them and I had, I got an email response. They knew what the schedule was, but they came in after the fact, um, they, standing back to see if something would happen first. Not probably the smartest idea, but a huge showing. And again, lots of people uh, in, in support of this protest and this protest movement. Now, this isn't the only place where this is this was happening. Marty up north, who I'll be speaking with in, a, in just a short uh, bit here, and you'll see him on the show tomorrow morning. Uh, he went out and he saw a, a similar showing in Calgary. I'll tell you what, it's totally heartwarming to see this because I've been a Calgarian for a long time and Calgarians don't typically protest. So to see this many people coming out tells you that there's an issue here. Everybody's chanting, leave our kids alone. It's not complicated. <laughs> no, it is not. It is not complicated. And that was the whole main point, point of this protest entirely. It's, again, that line in the sand. You, you know, you can look at the media and you can see the misrepresentations of what these people were largely about. If you look in the crowds, obviously, you'll see that it's not... Uh, supremacists of any type that you would you would think no it was a very diverse group of individuals and they were out there with one thing in purpose not any anti anything it was one thing in purpose protect children from indoctrination in schools and that is the line that everyone drew and that is uh, essentially where they're at with that one and i'd love to hear your comments comments in the comment section down below of course and uh we'll get to those and we'll see you in the next one uh, don't don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, hit that notification bell. It lets you know when I do my live streams. If you don't forget that it's at 9.30 every uh, Friday. But check that out. And we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trekking.